Last week, you might have seen a variation of this peculiar headline pop up on your feed. COVID-19 may be blocked by cannabis compounds, study says. According to researchers, certain acids found in the marijuana flower have been found to bind to the spike protein in SARS-CoV-2 and block its ability to infect other organisms. So is it true? Can smoking weed really prevent you from getting infected with COVID? Sanho Tree is here to break it all down for us. Sanho is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. Welcome to Rising. Thanks for having me. So what do we make of this? Was, uh, was this reported accurately? Um, I, I think people ran uh, ahead of themselves and got ahead of their skis, so to speak, on this headline. Um, you know, when I tweeted this out last week, it got 15 million views on that tweet. And I would say that 95% of the people who retweeted it did so with a comment saying, aha, I know how I survived COVID now because, you know, they smoked a ton of weed. Um, and no, that's not right. Uh, what the study says, uh, what it suggests rather, is that uh, certain cannabinoids uh, can be very useful in preventing the uh, infection of, of SARS-CoV-2 from, from penetrating the cells. Uh, but those cannabinoids, uh, CBD uh, and CBA, uh, a the acid form of these cannabinoids, uh, are destroyed when you introduce heat. So if you're smoking or vaping this and expecting to get the same kind of result, um, it's not going to work. It's destroying the compounds. Although I should say that there is merit um, in smoking weed and staying on the couch. If you get couch lock, you're not going to go out. And <laughs> there is something to be that. Okay, so um, what <laughs> form should we consume cannabis if we want to benefit from the anti-COVID effects? Um, obviously, that's the only reason I would be interested in course, cannabis would be to protect myself from COVID. Sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is way too early to draw conclusions. Um, this is a you know uh, preliminary study. It's not been peer reviewed. Um, it it, it uh, it's suggestive though, and it shows that these these things can be act uh, can, can be useful in a petri dish in terms of of blocking SARS uh, or uh, uh, coronavirus. But uh, in fact, uh, we don't know how that works inside the human body. Uh, right. So there's a famous uh, comic strip that you know says that. Uh, Every time you hear yourself that something, every time you hear that something destroys a virus or a germ in, 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 a, in a petri dish, uh, remember you can accomplish the same result with with a handgun. Um, <laughs> does it work inside the human body? Is it bioavailable? In what form is it ingested? Uh, and what concentrations? And you know how does it get past the various defense systems in your in your own body? Um, what we what. What's clear, though, is that if you introduce heat, it will break these uh, the acid forms of these compounds down um, in, into the regular form that will will get you high uh, or, or produce more psychoactive effect. Um, but uh, I think that uh, if you wanted to experiment with this, and I'm not suggesting that this will produce any kind of result in terms of, of COVID, uh, but the form would, to try would be um, edible, uh, would be um, either smoothies or uh, uh, raw form. Um, uh, capsules, uh, that sort of thing, uh, or tinctures, but, right. but not gummies, and nothing that's been touched by heat. Not gummies. Uh, right, and, yeah. not, and not brownies either, like no, nothing, nothing right. exactly, nothing that required heat. And you know, Sanho, you've been in this field for a very long time, and so it's not as if, and I think one, one reason people did take this a little bit seriously, even though it hasn't been peer reviewed, like you said, it hasn't gone through any clinical trials, but the, the medicinal benefits of cannabinoids you know, have been known for a very long time. And so can you talk a little bit about why it is that cannabinoids themselves, what are, what are they and why, why might they be effective in this setting? So uh, all advanced creatures from uh, uh, sea urchins to humans have an endocannabinoid system. We are about uh, almost a century behind in, try in terms of understanding how that functions. Um, in our bodies and in other species as well, uh, partly because, mostly because of drug prohibition um, and the word cannabinoid, the stigma attached to it. Uh, when that article first appeared, of course, everyone jumped to the conclusion of, of smoking weed. Um, that also discouraged a lot of, of research over the years, um, partly because of stigma and partly because it would be a red flag for the DEA uh, to come and investigate you and cause troubles. And no one wants that. That's not a good uh, career advancement. Uh, uh, you know, area of research. So um, I think it's it's uh, high time uh, that we began seriously looking at the endocannabinoid system because it regulates so many of our body functions and uh, ha can play uh, such an important role in, in finding new medicines and, and uh, new treatments for things. 
I think what a lot of people are worried about is that this is going to go the way of ivermectin. You know, when you talk about this and you say, oh, you know, can uh, cannabis might have some effect on COVID. Suddenly there's going to be this anti weed movement, you know, it, which is interesting that when you actually look at sort of the 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 movement that was originally against and, and still has been, I mean, it, you know, many states still do not allow marijuana, you know, it's still illegal in many states in the union. And so you've got that coming from the right, which is interesting. It's sort of this moral posturing of, well, we can't have you smoking weed. It's a gateway drug. It's going to lead to all these other things. And then interestingly, the ivermectin debate, when people were coming out saying maybe this works, maybe there's some indication similar to this where it's in a lab, showed to be doing something, maybe we need to test it in humans. Uh, there was this big sort of moral posturing coming from the other side saying, oh, no, we can't we can't uh, do this. So it'll be interesting to see if this reporting now will demonize weed from the left. I mean, could you imagine? You know, uh, it, it's better than drinking urine <laughs> or eating horse paste, <laughs> um, other right wing cures. Uh, but, you know, people have been consuming cannabis for a few years now, and we have lots of data on that. Uh, so it's quite different from uh, humans consuming large amounts of ivermectin uh, or, or other other uh, right wing cures, so to speak. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, ivermectin has been around for a really, really long time. So I think it's, it's actually quite similar in a lot of ways. I mean, Africa, they use it. It's like over the counter over there. But but, yeah, I, I, I worry that this is going to go the way of, you know, these other drugs that have been around for a long time and people saying, oh, no, we can't have this. This is this is a uh, false, fake, fake news, bad cure. Yeah, uh, Make it illegal. I, don't think, I don't think it's going to influence whether people continue to smoke marijuana or not. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Uh, but if it does encourage people to investigate other forms of, of, of marijuana, uh, these different cannabinoids, then that's a good thing. Um, it's it's we need to open that door to research and it's been closed for far too long. Yeah, that was that was the most interesting part. I thought that it, the, the smoking is not the right format for the delivery of the benefit. But uh, but there are other formats, aren't there? All right. <laughs> and my friend, uh, my colleague, Doug McVeigh, just did an interview on KBOO Radio in Portland with the, one of the authors of the study, Richard Van Bremen. Uh, so it's on his Twitter site if you want to go, go, go listen to it. It's a good seven-minute interview, direct from the source. Interesting. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Now, tomorrow on Rising, Hill reporter Rafael Bernal is here to break down why President Biden's approach to Haiti is a recipe for disaster. And journalist Jordan Chariton will join us with an update on the Flint water crisis. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you then.